Get the popcorn, Frank. Coming, dear. Hi, welcome back to uh, Bergeron's Briefs. My name is uh, Art Bergeron. I'm an attorney. With me is Tammy Pazaricki from uh, Pleasantries Adult Day Services. Um, Tammy, um, we talked earlier in the show about some issues around Alzheimer's disease and dementia. And, and we, you know, before the show, we talked about how we were going to do the rest of this because I know we wanted to talk about some things that you hear about and that I deal with a lot, the issues of um, what kind of documents you should have in place if you're worried about a stroke or anything that could end up leaving you disabled and needing to have somebody else taking care of your affairs. And as we talked, as, as I had mentioned to you, there were really only two things. For these, for if, while you're alive, you only really need two things. You need a power of attorney and you need a health care proxy. And we thought we'd talk a little bit about those two things. Now, and I know we were going to talk about uh, powers of attorney first. As, as we were discussing, the reason why you want a power of attorney is a power of attorney allows somebody to be handling your legal affairs for you doesn't allow them to make any health care decisions. That's what a health care proxy is about, but it allows them to handle your legal affairs. If you don't have that in place and you become disabled, then someone needs to go to probate court and get appointed as your conservator to act on your behalf. That's a very expensive and time-consuming process, which is the reason, as we were talking about, why somebody might want a power of attorney. So we're going to do this piece of the show, because you were saying, it, but you deal with folks, and you have got questions that come up regarding powers of attorney. And I think people put this part off, oh. not thinking they're going to need it. And I think it's so important, especially for folks who are diagnosed with the disease process, to get this in place. Um, some of the things I've thought about, like what, what happens with a power of attorney? Does, that, does the power of attorney take immediate control over my assets at that time? So, and that's... A question that folks ask all the time, and it's actually one of the reasons why a lot of people don't do powers of attorney. Mm -hmm. They get scared that by signing a power of attorney, they're handing over power, right? Mm -hmm. Because, well, what a power of attorney is, um, is it is, in legal terms, it is a form of agency. What you're doing is you're appointing an agent, right? When you're appointing an attorney, you're, that attorney is called, the power of attorney is actually an, appointing something called an attorney in fact. Uh, a lot of people will say, but wait a minute, you're an attorney, right? They'll look at, looking at me, they'll say, you're an attorney. What do you mean I'm doing a power of attorney? Well, I am technically an attorney at law. I can act on people's behalf as an attorney, in fact, but I have a special right to act on people's behalf in front of judges or in court. That's why it's always called, I'm always called an attorney at law. Anybody, though, can act on your behalf to deal with things that need to get dealt with, to sign checks, to sign deeds, to buy life insurance, to pay bills, to sue people. A power of attorney, an attorney can do any of, to, through a power of attorney, you can appoint someone to do any of those things, okay? So, going to your question though, so if you do a power of attorney, aren't you giving someone the power to do all of those things? And the answer is, um, depending on how it's written, probably yes, right? The traditional durable power of attorney, right? And when I say durable, the reason why you, you would want to do a power of attorney is so that people can act on your behalf when you are disabled, right? In order for them to be able to do that, you need to make it durable. That is, you need to spe either specifically say, right, right in the power of attorney, that the, that, that the power of attorney is meant to survive your subsequent disability, that it's, mm -hmm. it's supposed to stay in effect if you are disabled, or you have to say in the power of attorney that it is durable, and you have to refer to the state law that created durable powers of attorney. So if you're giving someone that power, th that really is conferring a lot of power on that person. Now, one way to deal with that is to actually add language to the power of attorney that says that it only takes effect in the future. 
that it only takes effect if your doctor certifies or somebody certifies that you are disabled, right? So the, that can be written in, it, so you, won't, you, you don't have to be afraid that now this power of attorney has all this power to, over your assets. That's right, and that's one way that you can do it. A second way, though, and it's probably it, for many people it's just more convenient, right, is they will execute the power of attorney. And this, is, this assumes that you've got folks who are just uncomfortable actually handing that document, handing the power of attorney to somebody, right? Uh, and incidentally, one question that comes up is, well, can you do a power of attorney orally, right? Can you say, well, I want you to take care of things for me? The, well, the answer is yes, but who's going to believe them, right? You, so the, the, one of the reasons why these are always in writing is so that the person that you name can bring that document with them to a bank or to somebody if you're you know, collect, doing a bill or something and say, yes, I'm really acting on that person's behalf. Is there right? a specific form and, and does it have to be notarized? Does it have to be drawn up by an attorney? Are there specific words that have to be in there? Um, there, is, there are some magic words appointing the agent. This issue of durability has to be covered. But in general, there's no official form. There's oh. no, if you went on a website someplace, you wouldn't find the Massachusetts durable power of attorney form that you could download. And so they vary. These forms also tend to vary regarding some of the powers that can be in the powers of attorney, right? So usually these end up getting drafted up by a lawyer, mm -hmm. right? You can find some drafts of them on, on websites, right? And download them. You just want to make sure that you really understand what it means, right? So there isn't an official form. Uh, it should be in writing, as I mentioned to you. It doesn't have to be notarized, okay. right? Unless you're giving the person power to sell real estate on your behalf, okay. right? It doesn't have to be witnessed, right? Is if it's a Massachusetts power of attorney. It has to be notarized if it is dealing with real estate, right? But it doesn't have to be witnessed. The reason why I mention this, though, is it, it does have to be witnessed in many other states. So if you have a power of attorney and you're meaning to give someone the power to deal with property in New Hampshire or Vermont or Maine, for example, then the power of attorney has to be witnessed, okay? So it doesn't have to be notarized, but here's a tip. Um, one of my children um, once gave me a t-shirt that says the good, the good lawyer knows the law and the great lawyer knows the judge. So when you've got a power of attorney, the question is, who's the judge right. of whether or not your power of attorney is any good? Well, as a practical matter, this judge is not like a real judge because you wouldn't be handing the power of attorney to a real judge. It's the bank teller, uh, the person at the insurance agency. The guy that you're dealing with who's doing your stock, right, who's handling your stocks for you. There's this whole variety of laymen that you're handing this power of attorney to. Well, if, you're, if I'm the bank teller, uh, or if you're the bank teller and I've given someone a power of attorney and they're coming to the bank and they're showing it to you, and you say, well, uh, I don't think that's valid. Well, what's he going to say, right? Is he going to say, well, I'll sue you, right? No, now you're kind of stuck. So, so one of your goals when you do your power of attorney is you want to make sure the document, uh, this for want of a better term, looks really official, right? Um, having the document notarized helps that a lot Especially of times. Especially like if, if you have to move or if, you're, if this is a long distance caregiving situation out of state, it sounds to me like having the proper witnessed documentation um, would work state to state. That would help you a lot. Yeah. That's right. That's right. And, yeah. and by the way, that, you know, that relates to a question that comes up for people who have moved here and have a power of attorney that got executed someplace else, or conversely, for people who go to Florida for the winter. And they're saying, so is this power of attorney going to be good if I have a problem while I'm in Florida? Mm -hmm. And the answer is, is, well, maybe it's going to be legally valid, right? But I can't be sure of that if it's in Florida. And who's going to be the judge? Right. It's going to be the bank teller in Florida. You're going to show up with a Massachusetts power of attorney. They're going to go, what's that? Mm -hmm. That doesn't look valid. So if you're going out of state and you have this kind of concern, then you might want to have one done that takes care of out-of-state problems. Now, by the way, I, I mentioned Florida because I know there is a, a, an incredibly detailed power of attorney that is required in Florida, right? 
um, in order for it to be valid. The same thing goes for healthcare proxies. So if you're spending time in Florida and you want to cover this issue, you should talk to a Florida attorney about that, Isn't right? Oh, wow. get, yeah, and get that issue covered. Yeah, wow. serious. I mean, for folks who, older folks happen to be in Florida, well, I just had a client. We just had a client who lives in uh, um, Martha's Vineyard um, and had just gone to Florida with his, with his kids and he slipped and fell. He ended up dying in Florida. Oh. But in the meantime, he was going to the hospital. There were all kinds of emergency situations, right? Nothing was, and, he, and no one could do anything for him because he hadn't done a power of attorney oh, that goodness. anybody in Florida was going to recognize. And he didn't have a health care proxy that anybody in Florida was going to recognize. So these are the kinds of issues that you want to take care of. And, and, and one reason why I mention that is these are typically very inexpensive documents to get done. You know, when you're talking about wills and trusts and things, these can get into the thousands of dollars. Powers of attorney, health care proxies for a couple hundred dollars. Talk to your lawyer. You're going to be able to get these documents done you know, really well and relatively inexpensively.